Hi everyone, Elizabeth here. So I wanted to do this video in uh, regards to no matter what you are loved. There's a little bit of a funny backstory on this and then I'll share another story uh, which happened right on the way of trying to make this video. But the other day I kind of saw a meme floating around online and it showed a picture of, of like say God in, in two different scenarios. And so the first one was kind of God going like this and it's like, I'll, or like this, I'll create the universe, God created universe. And on the second part of the meme, it was something like this that said, God created, um, God gives you cancer. And so I feel like there's just such a big misunderstanding of things that are going on right now. And obviously people who are, who've been into like God or spirituality or whatever, um, for a long period of time have obviously a very different perspective than some people who are kind of like newly waking up on this path or having spiritual experiences, whatever you would want to call it, um, to kind of help bring light to what is going on. So we have to understand that there are two different energies, destructive energy and creative energy. So destruction and creation. You have the light and the dark. It's the polar opposite of one another. In something like Christianity, you would say uh, the Jesus versus the devil or Satan. Some people who do believe in the Antichrist do think that the Antichrist is the polar opposite of energy of Jesus. Jesus, who was uh, the incarnation of God's soul, is the light. I guess you could look at him like the ultimate healer on this planet to some degree. Um, but every sort of religion talks about this you know, one side of the spectrum versus the other side of the spectrum on an energetic level. The frequency is of the light, the frequency is of the dark. Good vibes, low vibes, or high vibes, low vibes. So something like yin and yang, um, that obviously is the, the melding of the two um, polar energies, but saying that each polar energy has the opposite energy within it. So like, for example, the masculine and the feminine Every woman who is feminine has some masculine traits or energy within her. And then the other side is, you know, every man um, has some feminine qualities or traits within them. Um, so, for example, if anger is considered a masculine trait, probably the opposite is compassion, which is a more of a feminine trait. So anyways, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of this, but I just want to say that no matter what you are loved you are loved in the eyes of god or divine whatever word you use depending on how far along your path is and none of this crap can be blamed on him on god god doesn't want us to be segregated god doesn't want us to hate one another um God doesn't want us to revert back to medieval tendencies because we've been through this for thousands of years through witch hunts and segregation and exploitation and corruption. None of this is created by him. All of this is created by man. Most things man-made are easily corruptible things or energies or qualities <clears throat> or business practices. And a lot of it tends to root more towards the negative side or the negative energy. I'm not saying everything man-made is negative. That's not what I'm saying at all. Look at something like science. Science can create, let's just use a prosthetic for an example. Um, long time ago, I saw an article about an eagle he broke its beak and guess what? Science has created a prosthetic which glued on uh, the prosthetic to kind of give him a full beak so he's able to hunt and fish again. That is an amazing advancement in science. Using science to inject a bunch of toxic chemicals in people and then see what the hell happens, like it's some sci-fi reality um, when this has failed numerous times on animal studies, this is not good, especially when you go to mandate this. So this thought has been in my head because now um, living in Washington state, the governor has mandated everybody who is a state healthcare or long-term care employee to take the jab <coughs> by uh, mid-October the 18th. And, but they're, they are allowing uh, legitimate religious exemptions and as well as, or sorry, I should say legitimate medical 
exemptions and sincere religious exemptions. So I feel like so many people have been lost throughout this process. And what is the most disturbing is people who do work in forms of energy and spiritual practices like yoga have fallen along this path. I've seen yoga instructors in Seattle online, um, all with their little cards or the, the needle taking photos of themselves and posting it saying, uh, this yoga studio believes in science. <laughs> like the other side of science doesn't exist. The irony of that shit is uh, all of the same people that have created the needles and the jabs have also once said that yoga and breathing exercises are also quacky science, pseudoscience. So it's like people are completely lost. Um, they are also mandating only vaccinated people to come to their classes. And so that to me is the most disturbing end because these people have lost touch to their higher mind. The higher mind is the gateway to the soul, the gateway to the divine, the higher levels of thinking, not only critical, but in terms of what is best for you, what is best for other people. For me, a lot of that higher level thinking is the no harm mindset. I don't wanna harm people through my words, my actions, I don't wanna be mean. And that's the sad part about all of this situation is that there's like a defense mechanism that is arising in a lot of people, but not even in myself, not only to protect yourself or defend yourself, but it's making people mean because the other side is being so cruel and mean. And, and it's like, where is this going to go? So that to me, I feel is extremely, extremely disturbing. Um, seeing people fall off this path that work in an area. So for example, that example I gave of the yoga instructors, first of all, I do believe that a lot of narcissistic people are attracted to yoga or at least become yoga instructors. Um, I've seen it for too long. Some of the most egoic and narcissistic people are actually the power yoga instructors. There's something within them that feels like they have to be in the limelight or they have to show off their, you know, I think I've seen this so much with the men with like little man buns and mala beads around their neck and they're shirtless wearing, you know, pants from Thailand that um just you know it's all in your mind and they say all that stuff but that yoga group that i'm talking about they are also requiring you not only do you have to have your vaccine card to get into the class you also have to wear a mask so you are cutting off people's the right and ability to breathe air and and we've long known this through science diaphragmatic breathing is so important oxygen is healing hyperbaric oxygen chambers have healed themselves or healed people from chronic disease my father got a stroke after his doctor convinced him um of getting a shingle shot and within eight to 12 weeks of getting that shot he uh, developed blood clots that led to a pulmonary embolism and it also the the blood clot moved from the lung up to the brain and he got a stroke. And so part of his healing process was using hyperbaric oxygen chambers. And the irony of all of that, you know, as a man in his late 60s, he, he, <laughs> he no longer had gray hair on his body once he was in those oxygen tanks. Isn't that fascinating? All of his body at the late 60s went back to being his normal brown color. Everything from the chest hair to the head to other parts of the body that you don't want to think about on your father. But, you know, it, it's just... It's insane. It's insane to me that that this is happening. And what what is what I just want to just say is like you are loved. None of this comes from a higher source. We've long known corruption, and most things man-made have not really benefited society in a more positive way. I've had a vote recently for our mayor in Seattle. I can't do it. I cannot. Well, this is the uh, kind of the primaries. I voted for Jesus Christ. I wrote Jesus' name in the other box because I cannot put my faith and trust into human beings anymore because I've long seen smart, intelligent, wise people get somehow seduced by some something, a bad belief system, dark energy, whatever the hell you want to call it, low frequency and go down the wrong path. And there's a lot of people going down that wrong path. 
Now to get back to the story of um, how I ended up doing this video, my little normal spot that I use was uh, being used by somebody else. It's a, it's a, just a bench. So I was like, okay, well, I left the park, walked back by my apartment, and I walked by the UPS guy, and the guy's like, hey, didn't you live in this building down the road? And we just started talking, and we kind of, I guess, formally introduced each other, though we've seen each other for 11, 12 years now. And as I was talking to him, his, his name is Mohammed, so you can connect the dots on probably what religious belief he's in. But he just said he believes in the power of choice and that people in the buildings that he's been servicing for 30 years will no longer talk to him. They will no longer get the boxes from him. And he is kind of disturbed by that. And he just tells people, hey, it's okay to have a disagreement on this. But he goes, I just want you to know that I still care for you and I still love you. That came from a man who is a delivery guy. You know, I'm just saying there, there is something out there to have that conversation on the way for me, on the way to doing this video about saying you are loved, I just thought that was kind of ironic because I have know people right now in Seattle who are atheist, 100% atheist, believe in science, 100%, but they know that this is not right. And they understand that love is a very powerful thing and freedom of choice and having a sovereign being and not having government control is not of our highest good. Einstein was one of the greatest scientists probably to ever live. And you should, I encourage you, I will link it down below to other videos and blog links that I've written about love is the most powerful energy on the planet. And Einstein wrote a letter to his daughter that said, you know, he, he was studying relativity and all this for so long, but nobody can equate love because it is the most powerful energy on the planet. It is a quite a miraculous letter that he wrote to his daughter. And I do suggest that you go and listen to that or read it. Um, like I said, it's down on the links below, or maybe refer back to my other videos about love being the most powerful energy on the planet. But wherever you are, if you're jobless, if you're in fear, it's good to be concerned and it's good to be skeptical. It's not good to live in chronic fear where there's a parasite leached to your brain. There's a lot of people, probably myself, that are on the verge of potentially losing income. And it is really scary, but it is a test at this time to know that the divine will take care of you. And I hope to God that it does continue to take care of us and it doesn't continue on this path of continuous destruction because destruction does not come from anything higher. God loves all of his children. He loves everybody regardless of if you're black, you're white, you're Asian, you're gay, you're straight, whatever, you're man, you're woman, you're confused. He loves you. Dark energy is confusing energy. It leads you to not know what the hell is going on. It's almost like the yin yang is just spinning so hard that you can't even see the difference between black and white. You're just seeing gray. That is, is not from him. So when you start to look at how confused people are today, why do you even want to be involved in it? It's almost like just get out, mind your own business, live your simple life. Living a simple life is going to be very, very necessary for, for quite a long time. But our ancestors have lived a very simple life for a very long time. I almost wonder if we're watching our little Roman Empire, our decadent Roman Empire start to collapse. This might be the fall of our Rome where we've had everything. We've had gluttony. We've had consumerism. Uh, we've had technology growth. Uh, we've had f so much freedom of choice. <laughs> Just know you are loved. Even the person, the people who are trying to segregate this, they are loved. And, you know, there's hope to have some form of redemption or redeeming uh, qualities within them. I don't want to give them any sort of compassion at this point in time, but everybody is loved and, but, but some people are lost. I'll put it that way.
So if you have any thoughts on this, I'd love to hear it below. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Have a good day. Stay healthy. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.